This video is to help you revise osmosis and its gear towards the Irish Leaving Cert course. To begin, let's define osmosis. It's the movement of water molecules from a region of high water concentration to a region of low water concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis, so the movement of these water molecules, is passive. It requires no input of ATP. The osmosis questions are usually graph questions and they can be tricky. However, if you say this phrase, it should help you. Water is going to move from where there is a lot of it to where there is less of it across a semi-permeable membrane. This net movement will continue until such time as the water concentration is balanced either side of the membrane. Water enters from the soil into the roots of plants by means of osmosis. Another example of osmosis is the reabsorption of water from the nephrons of the kidneys. Another type of passive transport is diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of particles, usually molecules, in liquids and gases. The molecules in liquids and gases will spread out. They'll move from where they are in high concentration to where they are in low concentration. And the movement of the molecules is passive. It requires no input of ATP. An example of diffusion would be gas exchange in the alveoli of the lungs. Another example would be carbon dioxide diffusing into the leaf through the stomata and oxygen out. It's often stated that osmosis is a special case of diffusion. You must be able to explain this. You just have to compare osmosis with diffusion. So firstly, osmosis relates only to the movement of water molecules. These water molecules will move from that region of high water concentration to that region of low water concentration. And that movement must be across a semi-permeable membrane. So osmosis is a special case of diffusion because it only involves the movement of water molecules and they are moving across a semi-permeable membrane. Both osmosis and diffusion are passive processes. So let's discuss now a little of the importance of osmosis. Let's take some body cells, some red blood cells, and we're going to bathe them in a hypertonic solution. So bathing those red blood cells, or any of your body cells for that matter, in a hypertonic solution means it's a solution that contains high solutes, low water. So think of bathing or surrounding your cells in either a sugary or a salty solution. The water is going to move by osmosis out of the cells towards that sugary or salty solution. The cells lose water by means of osmosis and they'll shrivel, and sometimes the cells can get these creases on their surface, and this is known as crenation. So bathing your cells in a hypotonic solution or a less concentrated solution means that there would be high water content. Water will move from where there's a lot of it, the hypotonic solution, to where there's less of it inside those cells by means of osmosis. The cells will eventually burst as a result of taking in so much water. There is another scenario when your cells are bathed in an isotonic solution. When your cells are bathed in an isotonic solution, conditions are pretty similar either side of the cell membrane, so there's no net movement of water molecules into or out of the cell, and the cell basically stays the same. So let's now examine plant cells, and remember that plant cells have that rigid cell wall made of cellulose. Also, don't forget about that large vacuole. It is filled with cell sap, which basically is water and solutes such as sugars and salts. So if we put our plant cells into a hypertonic solution, Hypertonic meaning that the solution contains many dissolved solutes, so it has low water, high solute concentration, so think of sugary or salty water. So water is going to move by means of osmosis out of the plant cell towards that salty or sugary solution. The large vacuole loses water and shrinks, and so too does the cytoplasm lose water. The plasma membrane pulls away from the cell wall and the space between the cell wall and that plasma membrane will fill up with that hypertonic solution. This is known as plasmolysis and the cell is said to be plasmalized. This can be reversed by bathing the plant cells in a hypotonic solution, where water will move by means of osmosis back into the plant cell. The cytoplasm and the vacuole will both increase their water content and this will cause the cell contents to push back against the cell wall. The plant cell is now once again turgid. Any loss in turgor pressure will result in the plant cells becoming flaccid. And if this loss in turgor pressure continues, it leads to plasmolysis. When all the cells become plasmalized, the plant will wilt. So how will these plant cells maintain turgidity or stay turgid over long periods of time? Well, it's a balancing act. The water entering the cell, so the net movement of water into the cell, would have to match the net movement of water out of the cell. 
If you're considering the plant as a whole, well then you'd have to consider the transpiration rate versus the water intake by the roots. If the transpiration rate was very high and there wasn't very much water taken in, well then turgidity is not going to be maintained. You must be able to define turgor pressure. You could say that it's the pressure exerted by the vacuole and the cytoplasm pushing against the cell wall. You're often questioned on the applications of osmosis. Salting and sugaring is a means of food preservation. This means you either immerse your food in a salty or sugary solution or you cover your food in salt. Most microbes could not survive high salt or high sugar solutions, basically because they will lose water by means of osmosis and dehydrate. Let's just briefly mention active transport. This is how substances are transported across membranes from regions of low concentration to regions of higher concentration. And this requires the input of energy, so ATP is required. And this ATP is required because the movement is against a concentration gradient. A good example of active transport is the reabsorption of glucose from the nephrons in the kidney. So that was osmosis. Please note that the following terms as listed here are not on your course, however, they're good to know. Please note all the professional looking icons are from the NAM project credited at the end of the video. This video and all of the others do not replace any textbook, nor do they ever replace your teacher's guidance.